Videos like these are made possible by viewers like you, who support the channel through Patreon, channel memberships, and stream donations, as well as everyone who plays on my rebalance servers at badweaponrehab.tf. And they're also made possible by the sponsor of today's video. Today's video is sponsored by a game called the, hang on, uh, John Bon Jovi, what was this game called again? Oh, thanks, John. Wanted Dead, a cyberpunk hack and slash game developed by the team behind Ninja Gaiden and Dead or Alive. In this challenging love letter to 7th gen console games, you'll seamlessly transition from cutting your foes to ribbons with your katana to blasting them away with a wide range of guns, all inside of an 80s inspired cyberpunk world. But it's not your average dystopian cyberpunk story that takes itself super seriously. The game has a tongue-in-cheek sense of humor with a colorful cast of characters, and even has some fun little optional mini-games on offer where you play a 2D arcade shoot-'em-up, win some prizes in a claw machine, or eat ramen with your friends in a rhythm game. It's like cyberpunk Yakuza up in here. And just like Yakuza 3 has the final boss of fishing up a bluefin tuna, Wanted Dead also has challenging and unique bosses at the end of each level to really put your skills to the test requiring some serious strategy to defeat. If you're looking for a tough, brutal, focused hack and slash with a good sense of humor, and no microtransactions, battle pass, or games as a service general scammery, then give Wanted Dead a shot. It's on a huge discount right now for the next two weeks until October 24th on Steam. And you can also get it on the Epic Game Store, as well as for the Xbox and PlayStation. Check the link in the description to save big on Wanted Dead, and now, let's get back into the video. Shotguns are cool. This is just an objective fact that we've all come to accept, and TF2 has a selection of some pretty great shotguns, some of which radically change the way you play the class equipping it. Mostly if you play Engineer though. However, of the multi-class shotguns, I think easily the most interesting is the Reserve Shooter. This thing has had a wild history, from being broken, to being broken again but a little differently this time, to being pretty much normal. And if there's one thing I've learned in all my time playing TF2, it's that if a completely overpowered weapon used to be brain dead easy to use and abuse, and then it gets nerfed into a state of reasonable balance, that weapon is as good as dead in the cold, cold ground. Now, this isn't really the case for one of the classes that can equip this weapon. He got off pretty easy. But for the other, well, people haven't exactly been kind to it. But get yourselves ready for another patented fish stick spicy take. I think this weapon is still good on both of the classes who can equip it. So here's why I'm speaking in defense of the reserve shooter. The Reserve Shooter is a pretty interesting weapon. Its base fire is identical to the stock shotguns in terms of damage and firing speed, but in exchange for two shells in the clip, you gain a faster switch to speed so you can whip out your gun much faster than normal. This factor is extremely useful when used in tandem with the next stat, gaining guaranteed mini crits on all enemies who have been launched airborne. This can be enemies who are explosive jumping with their own projectiles, those who have been juggled by your own explosives or someone else's, or Pyro's using the Thermal Thruster, also the Grappling Hook and Manpower. I know no one plays Manpower, but I also know someone would mention it in the comments if I didn't. And now that I've mentioned no one plays it, I know someone is going to mention that they do play it. Okay, so the general purpose of the Reserve Shooter is twofold. First is its utility as a punish tool for bombing explosive classes. This isn't something you see all the time in pub games, but in those instances where all of the soldiers decide to roleplay as literally every Roamer soldier ever, or that demo on Badwater with the sticky jumper does the spawn camping thing, it's good to have on hand. The faster switch speed can really come in handy here considering how fast these classes move in the air, and being able to deal damage as quickly as possible can be a real lifesaver. And the second use that is utilized far more often is as a combo tool with the soldier's rocket launchers. Pop someone up in the air by shooting their feet with a rocket? and then finish them off with a powerful mini crit blast from your shotgun. It's a very satisfying combo, especially when you make full use of that faster switch speed to pull it off faster than the enemy can even perceive what just sent them back to resupply. It's fun and snappy, but on casual servers, random shotgun pellet spread will be the bane of your existence. It is seriously annoying to have someone basically dead to rights, only to do 18 damage to them with a mini crit. Sometimes it'll work to your advantage and you'll get a decently meaty 50 damage at longish range, but most of the time you're at the mercy of the mechanic. This coupled with just how fast people can be moving in the air, whether you juggle them or they juggle themselves, it's not always going to be an easy combo to pull off. And against heavies, there's not many situations where you'll be able to get the chance to even try, 
even though they could really use some extra damage being pumped into them a lot more than some of the other classes who are much easier to combo. But the question is, why combo? Couldn't you make the argument that the reserve shooter is just being used as a crutch for soldiers who can't hit their air shots? Yes, you could totally make that argument, and you may have a point. But there's more going on here that makes the reserve shooter more complex than just a simple crutch. Here's the main reasons that soldiers usually equip a shotgun. One, you're a free-thinking black box soldier who's broken out of the conch box hive mind and are using the shotgun to make up for lost damage from the lower clip size while still keeping the survivability benefits of the black box. Two, you're a direct hit soldier who absolutely does not have any confidence in your ability to hit directs. And three, there's a pyromane on the enemy team. Ultimately, in all of these situations, as well as just using it for no particular reason except for the sake of having a shotgun, you'll pull it out when you need to continue dealing damage to enemies after you've run out of rockets. The shotgun is essentially acting as a fallback tool sidearm, and it does this job quite well until there's too many enemies to shoot. And once that happens, the very reason you brought out the shotgun in the first place rears its ugly head as you have no rockets left to escape or fight off the remaining enemies with. Meanwhile, with the reserve shooter, encouraging the soldier to finish combos with the shotgun means he's more likely to have rockets at the ready once the combo is complete and his target is dead. It's something you could be doing just the same with the stock shotgun, but it's far more rewarding with the reserve shooter, so this playstyle has its merits. And if you want to be an absolute menace to all things airborne, you can put those worries of the reserve shooter holding back your air shotting potential to bed by pairing it with a direct hit and blasting everything out of the sky like you're shooting clay pigeons. Paul. <laughs> uh. Now let's talk about that downside of two less shots in the clip before you need to reload. In longer fights, yes, this is absolutely a drawback, and it's one I felt many times while trying to use this in situations where the stock shotgun would have just performed better. But I think it's a fair downside to have, as it's essentially trading damage over time for quicker and stronger burst damage against single targets. It makes sense that you shouldn't be able to sustain fights for longer, while selectively also being able to do more damage. In more ways than one. Yeah, you may have noticed during the stat breakdown that there wasn't a no random crit stat, unlike many of the other weapons in the game that provide some kind of crit or mini crit buff. Why a weapon like the Man Melter can't deal random crits, but all the other flare guns and the reserve shooter can is absolutely beyond me. And speaking of the Man Melter, I think it's time to talk about the big, fat, freakishly hideous elephant in the room, and that's Pyro. For some inexplicable reason, and not long after the reserve shooter was first added to the game, Valve decided to make it a multi-class weapon also equipable by the Pyro, and they have been playing balance catch-up ever since. From being so utterly broken that it used to mini-crit anyone who was airborne for any reason at all, including just regular jumping or even walking up certain stairs, to infamously being used in one of the easiest and most infuriating combos known to TF2. Oh no, not that one. Like, come on, listen, I hate that more than anyone, but even I'll admit that Spy at least takes skill to play. Now, back in the days before Jungle Inferno, Pyros used to be able to simply right-click an enemy gamer, launch them in the air and stunlock them, and then hit them with an unavoidable mini-crit meat shot that would probably kill them in one hit. And if not, then one more shot or their flamethrower would do the rest no problem. This was, to put it bluntly, the fucking worst thing ever. And I will gladly take the Scorch shot in its current state over this nonsense. Okay, maybe not gladly. Really, putting the reserve shooter on Pyro in the first place was a complete fucking mistake, and it never should have happened. There is a point where we needed to stop and we clearly passed it, but let's keep going and see what happens. Some have argued that since Pyro's air blast was completely overhauled in Jungle Inferno, the nerf made to the reserve shooter that no longer allowed it to mini crit targets launched by air blast was no longer needed. After all, for the most part when you air blast someone now, it just launches them so far away from you horizontally that you can't even get much use out of it to begin with, so what's the harm? I can see where this argument comes from, but I find that the exceptions make it hard to justify reverting the change. 
Air Blast can still absolutely trap people in disadvantageous positions. I'm still able to do it pretty consistently, especially when people are backed into corners. Not to mention, look at any Pyro Frag montage and watch people like Anthid completely manipulate their helpless opponents in midair. And now imagine Anthid with a shotgun that will essentially one-shot these pathetic saps. I don't want to live in a world where that's a possibility. But the world we currently live in is one where the reserve shooter is seen as honestly kind of a pointless unlock on Pyro. I mean, there's just no possible way that Pyro can benefit from this weapon at all, right? It's literally just the stock shotgun for Pyro with two less shots in it. It's completely obsolete. Well, I personally disagree. I find that the reserve shooter on Pyro is roughly in a similar state to its biggest competition, the panic attack. It's a stat-tweaking, preferential weapon with unique upsides and downsides. The two share quite similar roles on Pyro due to one stat in particular, the switch speed. Fans of Lazy Purple may remember his degreaser panic attack quick switching combo from his How It Feels to Play Pyro video. And in fact, Soldier has a similar combo with the Liberty Launcher for all you Amaxo fans out there. However, the panic attack has one big issue holding it back from really outstanding combo potential, and that's its range. While you'll never have to worry about the shotgun spread creating a Looney Tunes outline around your foe, the spread of the panic attack is very wide, and so is quite punishing at longer ranges. For a class like Pyro especially, who already suffers from range disadvantage in nearly every situation, this could be bad news unless you're always in a situational advantage. However, the reserve shooter keeps the base tighter spread of the stock shotgun while also having a similarly fast switching speed. And when combined with the degreaser, you can still effectively combo enemies like heavies while keeping a distance from them around the edge of your flamethrower, giving you more wiggle room in case you need to make a getaway or perform an air blast on a projectile class without injuring yourself. Obviously the smaller clip size means you'll need to be much more precise in your combos and won't be able to sustain them for as long, but for people who would rather take that over needing to be in sneezing distance of the enemy in order to outdamage the shotgun in terms of DPS, I think it's a worthwhile trade to make. But you may still be missing out on those mini crit combos, right? Yeah, sure. Unless you're a true gamer. Oh sure, you can't launch enemies with your air blast or mini crits anymore. But who needs to do that when you can just take the enemy's rocket for yourself and use it to launch them into the air? Going for that sick, double mini crit, practically guaranteed death combo. This is one of the filthiest things you can possibly do in the game. It is utterly disrespectful. Is it easy? No. No, it's really not. But it feels like a refined version of the old reserve shooter on Pyro. It used to just be right click the guy and shoot, right click the guy and shoot, rinse and repeat. But now you use it in tandem with your air blasting of rockets to seriously combo them and get over that 200 health threshold that pain in the ass soldier main has with ease. It feels incredibly satisfying. And because no one uses the reserve shooter on Pyro anymore, it's almost always unexpected. A soldier might feel confident taking his chance of surviving one air blasted rocket being blown back at him, but not combined with a further, near instant burst of damage capable of one-shotting a light class on top of that. And when you combine this with the reserve shooter's punishing capabilities allowing you to shoot down rocket jumping soldiers either advancing on you or trying to retreat, you can use this to become the ultimate anti-soldier pyro. Either that, or you can use it to be your own team's pro-soldier pyro. Again, the projectiles that launch enemies in the air don't need to be your own. So if you follow around a soldier or demo, you can not only act as their bodyguard and protect them, which is very helpful, but if they ever pop anyone up with their explosives, then you can hit them with that sick, nasty, unexpected reserve shooter combo. And if both of you are using the reserve shooter at the same time, then I think it just uninstalls their game. Now, to dial back from the hype a little bit, I'm not gonna say that this is the best option to use in this slot or anything, because like, come on. In fact, while I still don't think it's anywhere near bad or useless, it's pretty clearly still the worst of the shotgun options for Pyro. And beyond that, I also wouldn't say it's the best to use right out of the gate on Pyro either, unless you plan on going for those mid-range combos from the start, in which case more power to you. Personally though, I see this as mostly a counter pick on Pyro. If you see that there's some cocky soldier or demo main who desperately needs to be taught a lesson on the other team, then it may be a good idea to pull this bad boy out and give him the what for. But for the most part, if that isn't the case, you may be better off running something else that fits the situation better. But that's the nice thing about the reserve shooter. I think it slots along nicely with both soldiers and pyro's arsenal 
as a situational side grade. Really, the only environment it's problematic in is 6v6 competitive, and to be honest, I don't really have a solution for how to remedy that while still keeping the weapon's identity and also keeping it balanced, usable, and fun on both classes. After everything this weapon has been through, the fact that it's as balanced as it currently stands is nothing short of a miracle, so I'm fine with leaving this one untouched in terms of its balance. But certainly not untouched in terms of its uses. Really putting the reserve shooter to the test on both classes who used it has turned out to be a lot more fun than I was expecting, and I'd encourage others out there who might have left this weapon behind to give it another chance. Sure, comboing people with Pyro isn't as brainless as it used to be, and the skill ceiling might deter some people, but when you do pull it off, it really is its own reward. HE DID IT! HE DID IT TO ME! Everyone is having a very, very hard time with the sniper. And I really wish I wasn't using the reserve shooter right now so I could use fucking... Wow, that wasn't all that hard. Oh, shit. It's not that hard, guys! It's a sniper! I'm stuck right now, though. Completely stuck. Door stuck. 